All right, welcome back everyone to our monthly meeting of the Financial Freedom Through Apartment Investing. I am your host, Mark Caesar. And today we have none other than Miss Allison Weiss with us today. And on today's meetup, she'll be teaching us how to use our uniqueness to, in order to stand out in a crowded space, you know, with all the competition that there is around today. Mm -hmm. It can be very cumbersome to, to be that person, that knowledgeable person. But if you use, she'll teach us how tips and tricks on how to use your you know, your uniqueness and everything that's that you special that you bring to the table to attract your idea client. And for those who may not know Allison, she is the founder of CRE Recruiting, which is a boutique firm with a national expertise in commercial real estate placement. She possesses over 12 years of experience of experience in full cycle recruiting, human resources, operations, project management, marketing, and um, public relations. Public relations, she also has successfully recruited hundreds of commercial real estate professionals, resulting in consistent multi million dollar annual revenue growth. Um, that's just a brief of her bio. I will let Allison, um, you know, detail more about what she does and, and kick us right off. Allison, glad to have you on today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. And if you heard the earlier part of the conversation, I'm recovering from strep throat and bronchitis. So my apologies if I sound a little froggy or squeaky. I'm so excited to be here with you guys talking about what is one of maybe my favorite topics. Um, so I wanted to reflect before we get started a little bit on authenticity. I think authenticity is probably our biggest weapon and I think sometimes when we think about authenticity, we think about having maybe to share everything about ourselves or having to show up in the most perfect, most professional, um, biggest version of ourselves as possible. Whereas I think of authenticity really first in just really knowing and connecting deeply with who we are as people. Um, one of the biggest things throughout my career that I have really found um, resonates with people is connecting on not just a business level, but on a personal level. I think social media and the various different platforms that we have available to us today really give, give us an opportunity to speed up the process of the no like and trust factors. So who's heard of the no like and trust factors? All the reasons that people do business with each other, right? So I think um, if we keep that in mind, if we think about who we are as people, and then we build in some structure for ourselves and we go out and we actively show up as who we truly are as people, if we live by our values that are uniquely ours, if we share our stories that are uniquely ours, we can magnetize ourselves to people, to companies, to opportunities, to business that aligns with those things. So as much as we can get clear on who we are, what's important to us, what we value, we can make better decisions, we can align with the right people and opportunities, and we can be more successful as a result. So one of the phrases that I really love in talking about authenticity is this maxim, this Greek maxim, first know thyself. It was actually printed at the top of one of the temples in Delphi, the, the, the temple of Apollo. And what they meant by that was kind of a warning, actually. It was, it was meant to get the people who were walking into the temple to contemplate before you ask the gods for anything, before you make a request, before you have something that you're asking for, you should look inward first. You should do your own work to discover who you are and your own capabilities and your own possibilities before you went to the gods with a request. So I like to think of knowing myself and focusing on my values. And this is an exercise that I do probably on an annual basis, right? Because things change. We're dynamic at different points in our life. Family might be more important. Other points in our life, career might be mo more important. And so I want to first focus, if we're taking this journey to discovering how to be more authentic to ourselves, is to talk about and focus on for a bit, what are our unique and individual values? So I'm actually going to share my screen really quickly, and I can provide you with a, um, I can provide you with a, um, 
PDF of this particular list of values following the meeting. Um, and let me just make sure that I can do this. I guess I haven't. Oh, I have you to open have some preferences. Yeah, I just got a new laptop, um, which is fun. So now I have to reauthorize everything. Hold on one second. Okay. Sorry about that, friends. Okay, let's no try it again. worries. <laughs> Take two. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. And here we go. So here are the values. And I'm just going to share my screen real, real quick. Um, and let's do present so you can see it in a big version. There we go. So I like to think about values in pairs. A lot of people like to think of individual words. What I would encourage you to do is to use this worksheet and to highlight all the different things that when you are interacting with people, you want them to take away from the experience. So one of my personal values is generosity. Um, another one of my personal values is connection. So these are all of the things that if I think back to some of the best moments of my life, some of the times where I was fully in the flow and I was feeling, you know, sort of on fire for my work in my life. These are the feelings that I was feeling, or this is how I would describe that experience. Maybe it was adventure, which is another one of my values and kind of how I live my life or freedom. These are the things that on a daily basis, if I know I am in alignment with who I am as a person and I am working towards the best version of myself in my life, these are the things that are really resonating with me. So I will provide this to you after the conversation. And I would just suggest that as you are going about your daily life, as you are going into conflict or as you are encountering challenges, for instance, you know, there are often times where, you know, a client might do something unexpected or disappointing. And when I'm thinking about how I want to respond, if one of my values is love, I'm going to respond differently than if, you know, I don't necessarily, you know, focus on that particular value. So it helps me to make better decisions. It helps me as an internal compass. It also helps me in my storytelling as I'm, as I'm sharing stories and as I'm connecting with people about what's important to me um, and all of that. So does that resonate with you? How many of you guys actively do any sort of values exercise or are really connected on a daily basis to what your values are as a person? Anybody? Um, Mark, I feel like you're this guy. Okay. Good I goal. need to be better at doing so. Yes. <laughs> I have to agree. <laughs> Allison, I ask you, when you say values, right? Um, like for me, my value is um, Galatians, right? From the Bible. Sure. From the fruit of the spirit. Yes. Right? That's my that's my that's my values: love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, showing self to being humble and showing self control. I love that. Yeah. So, okay, so I, okay. Yes, and and this is the thing too: is like this is a list for you to choose from if you don't have a strong internal sort of compass or or scripture or anything that you're connected to. I love personally using scripture. And and things like that to reinforce. These are my particular values. This is how I want to show up in the world. This is how I want people to experience me. Um, and I, I guess one of the things too, is when I think about my values, who am I at? Who am I at my core? Who am I consistently showing up in the world? Um, because I think sometimes I might know to myself that my value, one of my values is joy bringing joy to other people, being joyful myself, um, injecting joy into spaces that I'm in. And so these are also reflective points and questions for me on a daily, weekly basis. Am I showing up with joy? Am I bringing that value to people? Am I, um, am, am I spreading this kind of value or do I have some work to do? Sometimes they're aspirational, right? When I'm sick, or at like eight o'clock in the morning, I will tell you, I'm not at my most joyful, but it's great for me directionally to have these in front of me. I keep them and, and I'm not living a normal life right now, but when I had a normal life and I had my computer screens, I would put on a post-it note, these are my values. So when I was on the phone and a conversation got heated or I was confronted with, you know, something that was frustrating or disappointing, 
I could see those values there and I could use that as a directional indicator to myself, like, oh, check yourself, Allison. Like that's not, that's not very generous of you. Or how can you, how can you show more grace to this person in this moment? If that's one of yours, Lawrence, too, it's like, it's such a beautiful scripture. I would say, do you have that in your home somewhere? Like that would be something I think that would be amazing to have in your workspace or in your home. So it's a constant reminder of what you're trying to achieve and, and the type of person you're trying to be both in your personal life and your professional life. And sometimes, sometimes we excel in one of those areas or both, um, or, or neither. And I think it's great to have those reminders all around the, all around the house. So that's what I would say is, you know, let's connect with our, our values first. Let's do that exercise. If we don't have a scripture, um, that we are particularly, um, focused on, I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Correct. I just want to make sure. No. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, so my particular values that I have just recently gone through the exercise of reworking and they've changed just a slight amount are community and connection. I like pairs, by the way. So mine are five pairs, community and connection, impact and service, curiosity and growth, adventure and freedom and passion and love. So those are my values. Um, Sometimes when we are using our social media platforms and we want to impress upon people our individual values, we have a hard time sharing stories about ourselves. So if you are a person who is not actively storytelling on social media, I would encourage you to take the focus off yourself for a second to think about your values and think about one person who might exemplify one of the values that you have. So for instance, one of my values last year when I did the exercise was hard work. Hard work is still a value for me, but it's not one of my top five. But when I was thinking about who really exemplified hard work for me as a person, I thought of Kobe Bryant. I lived in LA for 10 years and the Mamba mentality was something that I really connected with. This idea that he would be there before the game and he would do he would do shots, you know, 100 or 200 shots after the game and that he would review his tape and he he was so focused on excellence and execution and that work ethic really really resonated with me and so I found a beautiful photo of Kobe Bryant I wrote a post about the lessons that I learned from Kobe Bryant's life and I shared it on social media. And it was one of my more, you know, engaged with and more popular posts. And I also asked at the bottom of the post, you know, what other lessons have you taken away from Kobe Bryant's life or um, who else exemplifies, you know, this, this work, uh, this hard work ethic to you. And then in the comments, you got people engaging with different stories about people who had made a difference to them, whether they were, you know, a coach that they had had or some professional athlete or a business person or what have you. So I think sometimes we feel like, okay, I know that I need to share on social media, I don't necessarily want to talk about myself back to you, Lawrence and, and humility. If humility is one of your biggest values, I think sometimes we can show rather than tell about ourselves. And I think a way to show about ourselves is to do appreciation posts or to, you know, tell stories about the people who resonated with us or, or moments where we learned things that were in alignment with our values or, or key sort of moments and lessons through our lives. Um, another quick sort of example of an exercise that I think can help you improve at storytelling um, I don't know if anybody has a blank sheet of paper. I'll just walk you through it and you don't have to do it, but you can keep it in your head to do it. If you ever want, if you ever have a whiteboard or if you have a big sheet of paper, this is a really fun exercise just to draw a twisty turny path, um, you know, just sort of free form wiggles and squiggles. And at the beginning of the path is when you were born and the end of the path, obviously we can't foresee. Um, but we can start to plot along this journey of our life, these different milestones and these different crucial moments that really taught us things or made us who we were. So, um, a little bit of my backstory beyond the professional side, um, by the time I was 15, I had lived 13 different places. My dad was in the military. And so I went to three elementary schools, two middle schools and two high schools. 
And so on my twisty turning path of life, there's a lot of different moves and there's a lot of different lessons and challenges and struggles. There were births and there were deaths and there were friendships and there were breakups and all of these things. Um, it's a beautiful thing, I think, to reflect back and to see the path and to look at the milestone from a perspective of what did this teach me? What did it teach me when I had to switch high schools in the middle of my sophomore year? And I thought my life was over, <laughs> you know, like what, what, um, what lesson was in this particular challenge or struggle? Um, you know, how cool it is, I think, for us to be able to look back at what we've achieved and to remind ourselves of how far we have come. And of all of these different connective points and connective tissue, if we go back to the know, like, and trust factors, all these different things that people, you know, sort of want to know about us, these are also things that are good for us to keep in mind as we're out there networking with people, meeting people for me who also grew up in the military or had, you know, families that were just a little bit more nomadic or what have you. I can find these connective points and have these conversations with people and relate to people in a deeper way. I have empathy and understanding of different cultures and communities because of the way that I grew up. So I think taking a look back at those stories and thinking about too, like even drilling down into that high school experience, you know, did you play on sports teams? Were you in the bands? Like what were all of these little different sort of DNA points that you have that are interesting, compelling stories that you can keep in your back pocket for connecting with people, for sharing online, um, for encouraging people to know you beyond just the, you know, your, your photo on your business card. So another fun exercise that I like to do and would encourage you guys to do. Um, so we've talked about introspection, right? The next parts I want to talk about are more related to implementation and execution, um, because I, I think it's great to attend meetups and to network and to learn, but I think sometimes we do it as entertainment. And I really want to see you guys take some of this out into the world and implement. One of the things that I have been really successful with personally is once I knew my values was really refining beyond my stories, what is, what are the most important messages that I have to share? And so this is the idea of creating sort of lanes of content for yourself that you might share online in order to attract the business that you're looking for. So for me, um, I help driven commercial real estate professionals to grow their careers and their companies. That's my value proposition. That's what I do to help people. So all of my content fits into one of three buckets. It fits into either career advice, right? For the people who are looking to take their careers to the next level. It falls into company advice and best practices for entrepreneurs as they grow their businesses. And then the third thing is really personal. It's about sort of my digital nomad lifestyle. It's about being an entrepreneur myself. Um, so all of my content is going to align with my values that I have spelled out for myself. It's also going to fit into one of those three buckets. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to share my screen one more time so you can see how I organize my thoughts about sharing content that really is authentic to me, that really also gives people a consistent experience of who I am and my value proposition and the work that I do. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, and give you a peek behind, oops, and I'm going to escape this one and I'm going to go into my content pillars. So you can see career advice, business advice, and digital nomad. This could just be called lifestyle. Um, what I do and what I would encourage you to do is if you're working on starting to share content um, that is really authentic to who you are is to figure out what your three content pillars are. So Mark, for you, it might be financial freedom. What does that look like? How do you get there? Tax tips and tricks and things that I learned along the way in terms of attaining financial freedom. So that might be your one pillar. Your second pillar might be 
multifamily advice or multifamily knowledge. You might be teaching people the basic fundamentals of understanding multifamily. What's the vocabulary? How do you underwrite a multifamily property? What are trends in multifamily amenities? These are all the different sort of possibilities. And then your third pillar could just be your life. It could be you going about living um, in your community with your family, sharing whatever you know you think is relevant, interesting, compelling, exciting about your personal life. And that would be tremendous, right? Because you're achieving sort of demonstrating your value proposition to people. And you know, here are the tracks that I have to run on to share my particular message. One of the things that I think I struggled with initially when I was first starting to use social media was this idea that, oh no, I have to post today. I have to be creative today. I have to come up with an idea. And how difficult is it for us sometimes when there's a ticking clock or when there's a gun to our head to be creative in that moment? So I actually batch separately the ideation process of coming up with these particular topics within my content pillars and the actual creation of them. And then when I have written a post um, or come up with an idea, so for instance, here's one, the biggest misconceptions about a digital nomad life, or let's say I want to, um, I want to write an article or I want to do a piece of content about how to resign your job with class so that you're welcome back in the future. If you want to go back in the future, I create this idea but then I don't write the content immediately. I come back and when I know it's time for me to actually create the content piece, I look at this and I'm like, huh, how to resign with class. What's the best format for this? I actually think it's a video. I don't know that it's a post. It might be a video. It could also be a carousel post, right? Because people can save it. People could screenshot it if it had like really good step-by-step -step factual information. Um, sometimes it's like, I think it should be a video because it's a better story and I want people to see my facial expressions or I want people to hear my voice. Um, mapping out for yourself, your content pillars. And again, thinking about the values, thinking about how you wanna show up, how you want people to interpret you creates a very consistent experience. And one of my favorite pieces of feedback to hear from people, and I heard it just a week and a half ago, I was at a conference and I was giving a talk um, on um, social media, was that, wow, Allison, you're the same person. You're the same person here in New Orleans as you are on Instagram, as you are on LinkedIn, like you're exactly the same person. That's what we are aiming for. That to me is authenticity you can achieve authenticity and you can make authenticity look easy with creating a little bit of systems, a little bit of structure, really knowing who you are and then going out on a daily basis and implementing and executing. <clears throat> I want to pause for a second and ask if you have any questions. And if you don't have any questions, I've got a real small story for you. Any questions on this? Good. Okay. So, so one of the things too, that I, I think sometimes people, um, people don't understand maybe the benefit or the value of, um, and I think I know that Lawrence understands the benefit and value of it because of him sharing, uh, the scripture from Galatians is this idea of attaching yourself to a memorable phrase or idea or, um, quote. And so I just want to encourage you guys to think about those. And I want to share one of mine with you. And I know that it resonated with Mark because Mark mentions it every so often on social media. So one of my particular values is impact and service. And so for me on a daily basis, one of the ways that I get out of my own head about showing up on social media and um, being myself and being authentic is by sort of focusing on the other person. And so there's this acronym that I heard and I can't take credit for it. I didn't invent it, but it is something that I think every day when I go online and it's called, so the acronym is hope and hope stands for help one person every day. And so for me, if I'm out there, if I'm creating a piece of content, if I'm sharing a story, if I'm recording a video, I might feel sick that day. 
I might not like the way my hair turned out. I might, you know, be unhappy and not want to do it for whatever reason. But my focus always is the one person that might be helped by me taking an action and putting myself out there and sharing my story. And you never know the person that you're inspiring. You never know the person that you're helping. And an example of this, I can share with you um, from, I want to say my, I was in my mid twenties. It was my first job out of college. And I don't know if any of you had this experience, but I was always in a hurry to grow up. And then I got out of school and I got my first job and I went, this is it. This is the whole thing. I do this until I retire and die. Like, this is it. I had an existential crisis. I was so unhappy. I was really, really, really depressed. And I went to therapy. I like did a bunch of work and I was trying to like get myself beyond this. And I was like, you know what? Therapy is helping. These other things are helping, but I want to create a 30 before 30 list. So I created a list of 30 things that I wanted to do before I turned 30. And I just put it on a blog and I documented me doing the things on my list. And I just shared it with friends and family. This is like when Facebook was first a thing. Um, this was probably like 2008, 2009. So I, I did this list. And a woman that I had, she was a sorority sister from another chapter across the country that I had met, saw this blog post. And because of that blog post, she did her own 30 before 30 list. She lived in Waco, Texas. And on her list of things, the 30 before 30 um, that she was going to do, it was to go to New York City. She had never been on a plane before and she was afraid of flying. So she goes on this trip to New York City and discovers that she has a love for travel and today owns her own travel agency. She would have never discovered that if I hadn't written this list and said, hey guys, I'm really struggling. And this is how I'm trying to dig myself out of this hole. And I don't know who's reading this at all, but if you are reading this, I hope you're enjoying it. And maybe you should do a list of your own if you're not happy. And so she did. And so that's one small story. You don't know the help that you're giving to someone, even by posting a picture and a story about Kobe Bryant or a picture of your coffee and a, a Bible verse that you're contemplating that morning. You never, ever know. And we need to give people the opportunity to know us, like us, and trust us, to see us, to connect with us, to experience us. We don't know who it might help. And that's why I am just so passionate about this topic. And that's really all I've prepared, Mark. I'm here for questions. I have, I have handouts that I can send to you guys with resources on some of the stuff that we talked about, but I really appreciate you asking me here. Wow, awesome, Allison. I do want to thank you for sharing that. And for those who don't know, the HOPE acronym of that Allison mentioned, it she actually some um, she gave that example at Yona Weiss's meetup. So big shout out to Yona Weiss. Um, and I heard that acronym and it was just like a light ball just run. And as she says, you know, you just never know what you're doing and what you're saying, how it can help someone else you might not feel your best at that point in time but by you putting something out there it might encourage somebody else to you know take the next step and ever since i've heard that i've blasted across my instagram my linkedin as much as i can i try to add value to everyone every point of content that i come across so that is truly awesome and of course, I just want to tie this into it as well before we jump into q and a's um there's a great book that i'm reading it's called the hook point by brendan kane I believe, and it's it really focuses on the fact that the world is so crowded, um, so noisy today with, again, competition and stuff like that, and you only have three seconds to hook your, to hook your audience, you know, after that, because again, the human attention span is really when they see something, new opportunity or something interesting, if it doesn't catch their attention in three seconds, they're more likely either going to scroll or, you know, just bypass the next thing. So that's one of the reasons why I brought Allison here, because again, you be by being authentic and being genuine, that's a hook. You know, if you tie it properly, if you, you know, bundle it with a nice red bow, 
and you can hook your client, you know, whether it's in multifamily space, you can hook your investor or whoever you're trying to reach in three seconds, then you know, then you can captivate them to stay with you and add value. So I think Allison did a great job. So round of applause to you, Allison. Thank you so much. Um, we'll open up for Q and A's. If anyone has any questions for Allison, um, feel free to unmute and ask away. So Allison, great presentation. I like that KLT. I'm I'm, I'm all about the KLT. Right? Yes. I'm, I'm, I always tell people, I'm interested in how many doors you got. I want to know how I can trust you, right? Yeah. yeah. At the end of it, at the end of the KLT is invest, right? Yes, that's right. That's right. So I like that hope. Help one person every day. So mm -hmm. now I want to ask you a question. Let's see you have in your your little on your um content pillars. Yes. Right? So you just don't. So you you just write down the thought that you have to for that topic for the pillar for that content. So you know, write mm -hmm. the whole content out. Yes. So I actually separate and I'm going to share the screen again so you guys can see it. And I'll actually, if you want, even just take a screenshot of this so you can mm -hmm. see the layout. This is a project management tool called ClickUp, but I used to use Asana. You could use anything. I used to do it on post-it notes on my bedroom wall. You can do it any which way you want. Mm -hmm. But basically what I did was I would set time with myself, like a half an hour to an hour. And I would say, let me generate as many ideas as I possibly can for each of these pillars. And then once I had done that, I had this library that I could go back to. And on a weekly basis, I would say, okay, I want to post three times. So I'm going to post one post for each of my pillar and let me map it out. What, what am I hearing most in conversations um, this week that I think would resonate the most with my audience. It would be, you know, um, so it's this time of year. It might be how to close out the year strong. So you can count on a fully funded um, annual bonus. That might be a great topic for right now because we have a quarter left in the year. And so that's what I'm going to do for career advice, for business advice. I might do um, uh one of these others. And so I basically would use this to map it out on a calendar to say, okay, if I know more of my audience is engaging with things on LinkedIn, on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, maybe I'll do a LinkedIn post on Monday and Wednesday, and then maybe I'll do an Instagram post on Tuesday and Thursday. And I just map it out that way. Each platform is a little bit different. So I would just worry about what's your primary platform how many days a week do you want to post? I would start, if you're not posting weekly, just post once a week and decide a consistent day. And maybe you even have a theme to it. Maybe it's Tuesday's thoughts or Thursday's thoughts or whatever. And then you can ideate around these different, um, all around these different pillars for yourself. And then you can start to map it out. Like, okay, if I know that it's a Thursday thought, then maybe I write my Thursday thought on Tuesday. And I take one of these ideas from one of these pillars and I just rotate them. Sometimes something topical happens, like someone passes away and I want to do a post about that person or um, a holiday is coming up or um, something has happened in the market that people keep asking me about where I deviate from these things that I have scheduled. But this is nice because it removes me having to be creative in the moment um, which for me, I don't know why just causes a lot of anxiety and makes me shut down working in this way where I feel like I have a roadmap and I just need to decide like, okay, what, what am I most excited to create a post about today? I have all these different ideas, like fire these people immediately would be a fun post that I think is like a carousel of images. And I can have people's, I could have stock photos of people like, making mean faces and, and, and maybe I could have archetypes like the complainer. I could have, you know, the, um, the person who is, um, what's the word for people you can't count on unreliable, the unreliable. I can, I can decide based on these ideas when it's content creation time, but I separate like the idea from actually putting together the post or writing the post. And that works for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Other questions? Does anybody want help coming up with their content pillars or does anybody want to share, you know, maybe some of their values? I do need help coming up with my content pillars because I feel that 
I'm sort of all over the place and I really want to funnel everything and become more, as you just mentioned, you want to be consistent yeah. and, you know, one specific area, so to speak, and just build from there. So I just have so many different sure. approaches and I find it so difficult to post content. I mean, yeah. at the beginning of the year, I was, it was really networking, multifamily and stuff like that. But then it's like, okay, I started drowning now in all the, from all the noise and everyone else is talking about the same thing. So yeah. I really want to be relatable and figure out how to, how to stand out, you know, how to, have my content really be seen as something that's going to add value somewhere and that's not really picking back of everyone else's so to speak sure well one of the things i would encourage you to think about is like what what do people like if you're asked for advice what are you often asked for advice on and one of the things that interested me about something you said earlier is you gave a book recommendation one of the things that I think would be cool is if you are a big reader or consumer of other people's content, like, hey, here's here are the five biggest takeaways I had from this book or from this podcast or, you know, whatever it might be. I think if you can figure out, like, what are you really the most interested in? What are you the most passionate about? What are people always asking you for advice on? Those are like really good directional indicators as to what your content pillars might be or what one of them might be. Um, I always think it's good to have one content pillar, just be your life um, and the things that you're willing to share about your life. And everybody has a different sort of spectrum of how open they'd like to be. Um, so that means you only really have two content pillars to figure out. Okay. And just maybe marinate on that. Like, what do I have to say? What do I have to share that's uniquely me you know, what do people, what am I really known for in my circles? Why do people reach out to me? What, what is my highest and best value to people? Those kinds of questions can, can help you sort of circle around it. And actually, I think there might be some good questions here. Yeah. If you need more inspiration, this is, this is a, a good list of questions I'm known for dot, dot, dot. And here, let me just present this and we can make it bigger. Present. Okay. Yeah. I'm known for dot, dot, dot. I do my best work when dot, dot, dot. I'm passionate about, I believe I serve blank by blank. I'm most successful when blank and I create blank. Those, those are good, um, you know, sort of questions to marinate on. Um, and I think too, sometimes doing a value proposition exercise by the way, too, this is from an episode of my podcast. And so I can send you the podcast and this particular guide, and they're good to listen to together. But remember when I said I help driven commercial real estate professionals grow their careers and companies so that they can live the lives of their dreams. That's a, that's sort of an adaptation of this. Awesome. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Does anyone else have any other questions for Allison? I, mean, I appreciate it. She was excellent. Thank you. Uh, it was really, really great presentation, you, good advice. Uh, uh, and, you know, like Lauren said, that's, that was really good. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. So with that said, let's um, take our quick screenshot. One more question. So if, if, go right ahead, Mr. International. I'm, 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 the, I'm just, I tell you, I'm just in Google right now, just coming in, right? So do, when, do you, do you put like, do you use like Hootsuite to um, schedule your post or do you do it on a daily, on your time? Good question. So I actually use Planoly. Um, Planoly is more prominent for Instagram. The reason that I like it, it's more visual in its layout. Um, and if you want, I can show you a screenshot of it. It basically allows you to visualize your next few posts with your current grid on Instagram. So you can see that it's like cohesive and you're not using like too much of one brand color and not enough of another. Uh -huh. And it just gives you, I think the visual 
so cause, so because I use LinkedIn more, right? Oh, I, okay. I I, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't I'm like Hootsuite. You can't tag people. Yeah. Like that, that what I would tell you, it. yeah, and what Angel just said is accurate. Um, Hoot Hootsuite, other sort of content scheduling platforms. The platforms would prefer to have you post natively in their platform. And so sometimes it can, your content can get devalued from an algorithm standpoint, if you use some of those tools. Oh. So what I tend to do actually with my Planoly is use it to map out what my posts are, but then I go in and manually post just to make sure everything goes without a hitch that my content is, you know, posted natively in um, the platform. The other thing I would say too for you, um, Lawrence, is if you are a LinkedIn person and you're noticing that your content isn't getting the best traction on LinkedIn, check that you're not linking to external websites or content. Um, link, the LinkedIn algorithm really punishes posts that send people off the platform. So mm -hmm. The, the content that's getting rewarded a lot on LinkedIn today is content that encourages engagement within the comments, within sort of polls. Polls are very big right now, but the algorithm is always shifting and changing, but it's always going to penalize posts that direct people out of the platform. So what I would always say is link in comments or um, search and, and I give people the name of the article on Google to read the entire article or whatever. So I'm, I'm referencing the article, I'm giving people the information, but I'm not embedding it into the post because LinkedIn then knows, okay, we're going to, we're going to push this down. We're going to suppress this because we don't want people to leave LinkedIn. We want to encourage our users. Stay yeah. on it and use it to, yeah. to and, and mess your whole day up. It's like a slap machine. You yeah. have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, that is a great point because I wasn't aware um, of having the putting your links in the comments. I've seen a lot of people do it, but I wasn't sure that the algorithm, you know, played a big role. But no, thank no, you no. for that. That is a yeah, that is a great tip. Good. Uh, to always put a link in the comments. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So again, I want to thank everyone for jumping on. Um we are about <laughs> to have our Brief after party, just conversing off cameras. And um, Allison, I want to thank you so much for, for jumping on and educating us. This was definitely very pivotal and very in educational and instructive. Um, it's not always multifamily talk, but there are a lot of things that ties into being a successful investor or entrepreneur. And I believe that this topic was very much needed. So with that said, um, for all those who will be watching this episode, um, it will be posted on the YouTube channel uh, by tomorrow. So until next time, everyone, we'll be doing our little brief after party and conversing behind the scenes. Cheers.